Hello Joy Fuelers and welcome to our Joy Fuel Kindcast, a video and audio interview series featuring extraordinary everyday people sharing conversations around the topics of kindness, creativity and joy. I'm Becky Jane, your host for today's episode. It is my great joy to be here today and to introduce you to my friend Audrey Lynn. Audrey is a joy to listen to and she has many stories to share about kindness and how the seeming smallest of actions can have a profound effect on our lives and on the world. I first heard of Audrey's work when I watched her TEDx talk video called Experimenting Kindness. Audrey Lynn is a volunteer with Service Space, an all-volunteer-run organization leveraging technology to inspire volunteerism and to tap into the inherent generosity within ourselves and others. A graduate of Nonviolence and Social Change at UC Berkeley, her journey has been a continuous exploration in service and stillness. Whether holding circles for deeper learning and designing for transformation, serving guests at Karma Kitchen, immersing herself in a Gandhian way of life, or simply spreading miles of smiles on street corners. Her buoyant presence is a reminder of the power and joy that lie in the smallest acts of kindness. Welcome, Audrey! Wait, I have a little welcome ceremony here. Welcome to our Joy Fuel. I'm calling these kind casts. So sort of like the play of the word uh, podcast and broadcasting. And um, the intention of Joy Fuel is, as I've shared with you, to help us become aware of, um, of our joy, things that we're consciously doing to activate greater joy in our lives, in other people's lives, and then also things that we can choose to do. Like there are things we automatically do, but then there are things that we can be more proactive about. And um, I'm really excited to have you here today, Audrey. And um, I will share just for a moment before we start talking a little bit about how I got connected with you. And you don't know this whole story, but several years ago, I joined a kindness circle in my community and we started doing acts of kindness. And my children, who at the time were probably like 10, 9, and 3, said that they wanted to come to this circle, but it was for adult women. And so I started considering what could there be things that they could do that would activate kindness for them and teach them about, um, about how to look for opportunities for simple kindness, how they could keep themselves safe. You know, I didn't want them to do anything unsafe, but um, step out of their comfort zone a little bit to explore kindness acts. And when in my kind of research, I came across kindspring.org and I found these wonderful <laughs> cards. And then I started being a student, a student of kindspring.org and ordered these cards for my children and they were just so excited to get a package in the mail with their names on it with these little smile cards. And um, uh, we'll talk about smile cards in a minute for everybody who's watching, but um, because of finding these cards and finding the Kindspring website, that was how I got connected through Service Space and how I I'm now friends with you. So it was just serendipity and I'm so grateful that it happened. I, I love that. I love how these things, you never really know what seeds are planted when or when it all kind of comes around, but that's beautiful. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for agreeing to talk with us today about kindness. And um, I perhaps you could start with talking about what smile cards are. Sure. Yeah. Um, so smile cards actually just kind of started as a prank, <laughs> um, I think several years ago, maybe a decade or so ago now, um, they, you know, a group of folks were just talking and um, one of the founders of um, Kind Spring and Service Space was talking with his cousin and um, his cousin was in college at the time and so um, I think 
you know, they were talking about just hazing and, you know, pranks and, you know, the college kind of um, hazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, you know, they started talking about, well, what did it look like to do a prank for kindness? And, you know, what if we did pranks that actually helped people? <laughs> 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 and it's, a, you know, crazy concept. But so the next day or, you know, soon after, smile cards were born. And they basically are these small cards that say, you know, smile, you've been tagged. Um, anonymous kindness um, is the name of the game and now you're it. And so it basically invites you to um, do a random act of kindness anonymously and leave this card behind as an invitation for the recipient to pay it forward. Um, so it's beautiful. I mean, I think it, it, it can be very humbling when you receive one because it's like your mind wants to go to, oh, who could have done it? You know, who would have thought of me or who would have like wanted to do something, but you really never know. And, um, and that's the beauty because it's just knowing that there's someone out there that, you know, is kind and, you know, and that you keep that cycle going. Yes. So. It's very funny how, when kindness is done to you anonymously, you become very suspicious. Like, I think I know who it was. And kind of like this, um, I want to figure it out. And then I want to do that. And it's it right. creates this beautiful contagion of, uh, you know, and the cause, especially because it tags the next person to pay it forward and, and make them think about uh, what they could do to spread, yeah. spread kindness. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how um, how did you end up coming to Kind Spring and Service Space? These are two two of several organizations that Audrey is connected with in her volunteerism and service. Yeah, um, so I think I probably several years ago now, maybe seven or so years ago, um, I was uh, studying in college, and um, I was learning about uh, nonviolence. Um, I had kind of gotten there because I was studying about different social issues and I really wanted to do something to help solve it or help create some sort of change. And so, you know, I started getting involved and then after a while I started feeling like, why is everybody fighting for peace? <laughs> um, you know, it was like wanting to end poverty or end injustice, these big things. and. Um, and there seemed to be a lot of turmoil within that process, too. So I thought, man, i got to learn about Gandhi, and i got to learn about Martin Luther King Jr., and got to learn about these people that really, you know, embody the, the changes that they wish to see in the world. And so, um, so I spent a summer doing a nonviolence mentorship program, and uh, in that process, uh, someone told me about this meditation gathering, um, and so I was curious and I was starting to learn a little bit about meditation. So I just went and it was about an hour away from where I was, but, um, we, you know, I guess people carpool down regularly. So I joined a carpool and I went down and, um, and it was just, you know, a simple, simple meditation gathering, you know, where everyone, you know, you sit for an hour in silence and then. There's a passage, a thought of the week that people read and, you know, you go around in the circle and everyone shares their thoughts on it. And then um, the hosts offer this um, home-cooked meal, you know, and every, as an offering and everyone eats it. Um, and, you know, just the kind of atmosphere that's created, it's, there's no, you, you just show up as yourself. There's no, uh, you know, there's no judgment. There's no, like, you have to be a certain way. There's no role specific that you have to perform and um, and it's very genuine. And I remember just feeling like, why is everyone, you know, so eager to do the dishes? Or why is everybody, <laughs> you know, you, they're like so happily serving you seconds and thirds. It's just like everyone's really nice. It's like this really like a disarming kind of kindness, you know, um, where people are, you know, I, and I've met kind people, but it's just like I've never been around so many people that really want to do the dishes. <laughs> and... Um, and so over time, I started to feel like, wow, these people know something I don't know. What is that? <laughs> and, um, and then I started to learn about, um, you know, different projects where uh, I might be able to get involved. And so I think the first volunteer experience I had was um, for Karma Kitchen, which is uh, basically it's an experiment in generosity, um, and it's a pay-it-forward restaurant. So a group of friends just decided to, you know, rent out a restaurant for a lunch 
period, and, you know, run it as a pay-it-forward, you know, karma kitchen. And um, and it's all volunteers, only, I guess, it's basically, you know, the servers, the dishwashers, the platers, like, all of those are just volunteers, first-time people who, you know, are, are from all walks of life. Like, you know, I was a college student, and there were, you know, doctors and teachers and business people, like, you know, every type of person. And, um, and basically, you know, people come in and your job, in addition to just serving them, is to make their day. And so um, I remember volunteering this day and, you know, you're, you're spending eight hours on your feet, like, mm. bustling around, doing, like, serving work, yeah. um, like a waitressing job. But it just feels so different because your focus is like, oh, what can I do? What extra touch can I add? Like people, you know, people would plate rice on the plate and then like use peas and make a smiley face. (laughs) (laughs) The desserts person would, you know, someone would bring in flowers and the desserts person would like, you know, put up, put like a touch of rose petals on each dessert or something like just really small touches. Um, And then there's also, you know, we would have a kindness table with just gifts that people have given us that we want to pay for it. And so it would be you know, on the side, and anyone can go and, like, you know, take anything they would like, but then we would also be on the lookout of, like, having a conversation with someone and then saying, oh, they might really like this, and so your whole attention throughout the day is basically, like, you know, building your muscle for kindness, wow. and um, and you I would said, notice... Sorry, go ahead. I was, well, I would notice that, you know, after spending eight hours doing this, you know, I couldn't help but carry it forward throughout the rest of my week because what was happening really was an internal practice of, um, of, of looking at the world in a different way, you know, rather than looking at the world from a lens of how can I, you know, what can I consume? What can I get out of this? I was looking at the world of how can I contribute? How can I lift someone else's, you know, up and make their day? And so in doing that, um, I, I found myself, like, at the end of the day, you know, throughout the week, I would want to do my roommate's dishes, or I would, you know, I would just feel the joy that comes from just supporting and serving someone else, and without any expectation in return, it's just there's a natural, you know, joy that comes from that, and, um, and it becomes a virtuous cycle as you start to step into these opportunities to serve, um, you know, and you you see others kind of step in that way, you, you kind of become, fall into the cycle of trust. Hmm. Um, the, the cycle of trust? What, um, me, let me ask you really quickly, how does Kama Kitchen keep going? Because it still is going, right? It still happens. And um, how do the people who organize it, um, how do they sustain it if, if um, nobody's paying for the service or, you know, people that are working there aren't getting paid and the food, how's the food covered? Right, yeah, well, it's basically, um, it's basically as if you're renting out a restaurant, you know, for a private event. And so the group that started it talked with the owner and the owner was like, yeah, you know, tell us when you want to do this. So we'd love to, we'd love to support this. And, um, and you, and we do, there is a cost for paying for the space and there are cooks that cook the food um, because of health code issues. Volunteers obviously can't. <laughs> cook the food. Um, so there are a few cooks that come in each day and make the food. And then um, basically the process is when you walk into Karma Kitchen, you know, someone greets you at the door and um, gives you, you know, explains the concept a little bit, like, and you get seated. And then you'll notice there's no prices on the menu because everything is, you know, a gift and it's already been paid for by the people that came before. Um, so, you know, a group of folks, the volunteers and people that were interested, you know, just offered seed money to like, just run the experiment for one day and just said, you know, we'll just run this experiment. We have this, you know, surplus and we want to put it here. And so, um, so it was one day, you know, and if it, if it, um, sustains itself, then we'll do it again. If it doesn't, then it was a great experiment. And, um, and so, and then you know, the people at the end, uh, um, as people are leaving, yes. Yeah, yeah. So then at the end of your meal, you get a bill, and it reads zero dollars, and it just shares a little bit about kind of you know the concept of Karma Kitchen, and you know every week, a lot of times people ask how much does this cost, and we don't really have you know there's no set answer because there's so many different types of costs. You know, every week it takes um, hundreds of volunteer hours, or and you know certain amount um, of, like, monetary, you know, 
cost to create the food and the space and um, those things. And and then there's just, you know, there's so many things that are priceless. You know, there's so many things that are just um, offering value in ways that we can't quantify in a financial way. Um, and so we don't really know how much it costs, but, you know, you're invited to pay it forward in whatever form that you wish. And, um, and so there's a little envelope and um, folks can pay it forward um, for the next person. And it's beautiful. And like the the years that I think that was it started in 2007. So and since then it's it's always been sustainable. And um, and it's yeah, that's a great. I've heard that there are other um, bu businesses that have been inspired by Karma Kitchen around the world to start similar um, offerings. Yeah. Well, um, so the beauty of it too is like it's you know everyone's a volunteer, so it's not like. Uh, big formal thing it's just you just have to have a heart and you know yeah uh, you know hands and a head to kind of make it happen and so people who have come through or who have heard about it get inspired and they want to start it in their own corners of the world and so um we've had it you know a karma kitchen in washington dc in chicago um i think in singapore in indonesia in japan um in france and um in india also and so, and, you know, it's beautiful because it's the same spirit and it's just taken to different, you know, different parts of the world. And so it gets integrated into the local community and the local culture. Um, but the spirit remains kind of pretty universal. That's amazing. That is so emotional. How many years have you been involved with Karma Kitchen and the other um, organizations? Um, I guess I've been volunteering on and off since... 2008 or so so probably for the last seven years I love um, what you said when you went to the gathering you felt like they knew something that you didn't know and like you were interested to see what it was what what do you think the essence I, I know that they were involved in the organizations that you then grew into and have been supporting but what do you think the essence of what um, what people who act in kindness know that people who may not have considered kindness, um, what do you think the essence is of that? Oh, well, that's a big question. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, so many parts of it, but I think one thing that I've noticed that is that it's regenerative. So there is, you know, sometimes, and I think you can experience, like you can try to be kind and then feel that everyone's taking advantage of you and then get burnt out. Um, in some spaces and then but when you view kindness as like as if you're the only beneficiary like really I'm not being kind to get anything done really I'm being kind to transform myself in the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, so it's my own practice and so you can you know if I give you a rose and you don't accept it that's fine you know that's my practice to you know continue to offer um, or uh, and so it's, I think, um, the element of kindness that, um, you know, the Dalai Lama says, be selfish, be generous. <laughs> um, and so really, I feel like a lot of times when I'm, you know, having an opportunity to serve, I'm actually being selfish because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm giving myself the opportunity to step into a space where, um, where I can transform myself in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that's that that there's an element of that inner transformation that you know it just shines through people's eyes you know or it, it just and and sometimes it doesn't you know sometimes the transformation is not as pretty um, but it's it's a whole process and I think that um, the commitment to continuing to to internally grow and you know be the change from the inside out um, is beautiful and humbling and um, has so much to offer. I love when you when you said it's a practice, like it's a muscle that we flex and get stronger and get um, get through uh, the resistance. Um, um, Audrey had done this beautiful TED talk um, for a summit, and I'll be sharing a link um, to her talk uh, around where you are seeing this kind cast. And in the talk, you were talking about how you wanted to pay for somebody. Um, but you thought, well, they might overhear me or you, you've got kind of self-conscious and then you didn't do it until you got to the next place with the ice cream. And 
um, if you could tell that story. And then what I thought was really interesting, though, was many times myself, the first thing that will come up if I haven't practiced lately, practiced, is that resistance of, ooh, well, what happens if? And the internal like dialogue that, that tries to talk me out of it because I don't want to upset anybody or I don't want it to come across in a way that I don't mean or, you know, like this resistance. So I wondered if you could share that story about the, the ice cream and what you went through. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, and I think it's, it happens so much. It's like if you don't catch it right, like if you have an intention to do something and you don't act on it right away, oftentimes it just kind of sits on the back burner. Um, so I think a couple years ago now, um, Kind Spring, um, uh, the community was doing a 21 day kindness challenge. And it's basically, you know, a, a commitment to do a random act of kindness, a unique random act of kindness every day for 21 days. And, um, and it's beautiful because you do it together. So um, we would log on to this online community and you'd see stories from people from all different parts of the globe. And it was all anonymous because no one shares their name. It's kind of just you get a nickname. Um, and, and so you kind of have that like conviction and knowing that other people are doing this too. You're not alone doing it. Um, and it gives you kind of the encouragement to, to kind of do a random act of kindness when you might feel kind of awkward about it. So I was actually at the airport the day that it began, and the suggested idea of the day was to pay for it a surprise treat. Um, and like, and so I was like, okay, I'm at the airport. You know, there's all these cafes. I'll just pay for the person behind me. And so I walked up, I think, to one cafe, and there was a long line. And immediately, I noticed my mind go to thinking, oh, the line is so long, you know, and. And then if I'm, if I'm waiting in line and I go to the cashier, maybe the person behind me will hear me saying that I want to pay for their, you know, coffee or their pastry or whatever, and, and then it won't be anonymous. And so all these just thoughts, like, you know, these silly thoughts of, like, oh, why this is a bad idea it just flooded my head. And so I just kept walking. I was like, okay, I'm not going to that cafe. Um, but then because I had committed to this 21-day kindness challenge, I thought, no, 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 I have to, I have to do this. It's my practice. Um, so I um, walked by, and there was this ice cream store, and there was no line. <laughs> and so I was like, perfect. <laughs> so I walk up, and um, I, I just uh, start talking with the cashier, and I was like, you know, can I pay forward for the next ice cream cone um, for the person who's going to come next? And, um, and she's like, she took a minute, and she said, uh, can you, you say that? What do you mean? You want to pay for the person, you know, after you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I just want to, you know, do a random act of kindness, and um, and pay for the next person's ice cream, and and it was really sweet. She she just opened up and she got really interested. She just said, "Oh, that's really nice. You know what? Like, tell me more." And mm -hmm. so I was, I started sharing about the kindness challenge, and um, and then I took out a small card. And I said, "Can you give this to them?" And she was like, "Wow, I love these." And I was like, "Oh, here you can have some too." <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so I paid for it, and then I quickly walked away, and there was no one there. Um, and I went and sat down at my gate, and I just felt there was just something. I think even in interacting with the, you know, the cashier, and then also just putting out an intention to support someone else, you know, whether it's just simply buying them an ice cream cone, um, there's something that connects you with, with the nameless faces that you see. And so I remember sitting down at my gate and just suddenly finding myself in an internal space of openness. And I would just look at the people around me as if, as if they were my friends that I hadn't met yet, you know? And, as if, and I just started thinking, wow, each person has a story behind them. And, you know, just that, um, that eye for, like, our, our similarities, that eye for the things that we share um, expanded. And, and then I saw this little boy running by with an ice cream cone, and I was like, oh, maybe he got the ice cream, you know, and, and that would be great if he did, um, but I wouldn't know, you know, and I just smiled to myself and um, felt like, wow, and even it's a small act, but in the process, I transformed myself, because for me, really, it wasn't so much about giving the ice cream cone so much as um, seeing how I shifted my own lens, and as I shift my own lens, you know, what we think... Um, you know, our thoughts turn into our actions and our, you know, and so many other things. So, um, so it was a beautiful moment for me. That's wonderful. That's a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as, um, as people uh, in the joy fuel experience are 
growing in their joy awareness and um, experimenting with different things that they can do for joy. Are there any ideas of things that, that might come up that people could do simply? Maybe they don't have money to buy ice cream for somebody or um, something that would spark very simple acts of kindness that would be a good starting place for people. Yeah, um, I mean, there's so many things. <laughs> like, there's so many, the more you do it to, the more you realize, like, it's such a, it, it, there's so many layers. Like, it's so easy to buy ice cream, you know, um, in some ways, it's so easy to want to give, a, like, a material gift, but then there's so many other gifts, you know, even just by your, the depth of your presence can be such, such an act of kindness, right? Like, just really listening to someone, really seeing someone is a huge act of kindness. You know, so often, you know, in our busy schedules today, it's so easy to just walk right by each other and not really take the time to check in with someone. Even like if you go to work, right, like to check in with someone at work and say, how are you, you know, and really kind of try to get to know someone from a more um, genuine space rather than just what your role is. Right. Sort of like, you know, with my family, my husband comes home from work. Oh, honey, how was your day? Oh, it was good. I'm like, no, no. How was your day? Really? How was it? Like, you know, there's that sort of, yes, it was good. You know, that normal kind of, but to go deeper and really, like you said, um, have a presence with somebody and, and really listen and really care about what they're saying uh, and, and take time for it. Because in our busy, busy schedules, it's hard sometimes to dedicate that presence. Right. Um, I, I often say that, like, our presence is our greatest present because mm -hmm. that's that's really what we have, you know, like, regardless of our socioeconomic status, whatever, our presence is such a great gift. Right, yeah. It And it's, um, and then everything that follows from that presence, you know, the recipient can feel the love, like, um, you know, even just writing notes, like a nice note and putting it in your kids' lunch boxes, or, you know, or even one time I've gone to a library and written, you know, just nice notes and put it in uh, library books um, for people to find. So it was, I, it was funny, we would go to, um, a group of folks went to put uh, these notes in, you know, the testing section, like mm -hmm. the SAT or GRE or whatever, those, the testing books, and, <laughs> and wrote like, you're already an A plus, or like, Aww. you'll do, you know, just encouraging things, or went to, you know, uh, you know, teenage, like, magazines, for, for, you know, young teenage girls and wrote, like, you're already beautiful or, or different things like that that just, um, you know, might su surprise someone in some way. Um, there's so many, I guess, so many ways that you could get creative, but really just, um, I think, the what flows from your presence and intention to, to give um, is, it, well, it naturally comes. That's so. awesome. I love that idea. Those ideas are... Uh, especially for kids, you know, the, the testing stuff, there's so much pressure on them. They get a little note from a stranger, it just make you yeah. feel really good. That's awesome. Um, do you, can you think of any times, like, um, as I was saying about how joy fuel is to help us become guardians for our joy and other people's joy, can you think of a time in your life where um, joy was diminished for you or where you were particularly challenged where um, something that you did to help move yourself out of that kind of you know sad feeling or um, you know I'm, I'm not um, I don't ever say that we should always move out of sadness I think we should allow like how we feel to be but sometimes we realize like maybe we are just staying in one space of feeling and it's time to shift and it's time to grow from what we've experienced in like a dark time. Um, are there any, is there any experience like that that comes to mind for you and, and a story that maybe you could share what you did? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I think one thing... I would do. There was a period, There was a year where I spent um, teaching at a school for at-risk youth. Um, it was a high school, and the days would be really long, and um, you know, often thankless. <laughs> and um, and I would notice myself just, you know, like whenever I just started focusing on myself and just how I was feeling, like it would just start to feel um, just kind of. Just 
not self-absorbed, but just like it wasn't really going anywhere. You know, I didn't feel like it was just like focusing on myself and my needs and what was wrong with myself. And mm -hmm. and I would forget that there was, you know, there were so many people around me that were also going through, you know, whatever else. And, you know, so often we see their faces, we even know their names or we work with them or we see them on a daily basis. But, um, but there's so much underneath each person. Um, there's so much going on. And... Um, and we don't always know. And so what I would what I would do is when I would find myself getting into a space where I would just start to be focusing on myself a lot, I would, you know, go to, um, at that time I was living in Boston, so I'd go to Harvard Square. I would just go to this kind of um, busy downtown area and just look for ways that I could do random acts of kindness. So um, I remember one time, and it was cold, you know, it was winter. Mm -hmm. I remember one time... Um, I went into a, uh, you know, I was just walking around and I saw these two um, young women who were, um, maybe, you know, the what's like soliciting kind of signatures or um, something for the environment. Um, so they were their job basically was to stand and like kind of talk to strangers and get signatures or get people to kind of donate. Um, and I thought, wow, that's it's a really cold day, and they're standing outside, mm. and all these people, you know, and it's a hard job, right? Like, people are walking by them, and so I thought, I'm going to get them hot chocolate. <laughs> and so I went into a store and just picked up, you know, ordered uh, two cups of hot chocolate, and, um, and then came back out, and... Um, and I, uh, one woman was talking to a stranger, and the other one was just kind of looking for people to talk to. So I went up to her, I was like, I would like, can I give you this, you know, cup of hot chocolate? It would really make my day to, to you know, give this to you. And, and she was just like, she was just kind of like shocked. She's like, really? You know, this is the best, like, interaction I've had all day. <laughs> and, and like, and it was cold. So she, you know, I gave it to her and I was like, can you, and then when that woman's done talking to that person, can you give this to her too? And she was like, yes. And then she, we started talking, you know, and about random acts. And she was like, I'm going to do this when I get home, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do a random act of kindness too. And, and it was really sweet. And I think for me too, it's just, um, when I, when I notice myself kind of getting focused on my, my own problems or my own kind of insecurities or stresses, um, taking the space to just step out, you know, for a half hour or 15 minutes or for an hour and just, like, find ways to make other people's days, it helps me step out of myself. And it makes me see that we're all in this together, that everyone is going through stuff together um, and that, um, that, that there's a bigger picture. It's like, actually, um, you know, one of the things I love to do is go walk to the top of the hill nearby and at the top of this hill where I live, you can see the whole kind of uh, landscape. So, and I live by the ocean and um, in the Bay Area. So you can see, you know, San Francisco, you can see Oakland, you can see the whole Bay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, cars are like the size of ants. And they're like, you can see the highways and the cars are like, you know, moving as if there were ants on these highways. And it's always a humbling reminder of what, how, you know, our size in the big scheme of things. Like how much those little things that, you know, can ruffle our feathers throughout a day um, really dissolve in the big picture. Like they're really, really just tiny, barely a wrinkle in the big picture. And I feel like whenever I have the opportunity to do an act of kindness for someone, it's also in a way an act of honoring my interconnectedness. And a way of like really understanding that I'm so, I'm just a wrinkle in time, you know, and that by doing this act, I'm connecting with you know that this entity, this other being, and um, and that we're all in this, you know, we're flowing down the river of time together, and we don't know where it's coming from or where it's going, but um, but it's a much bigger, you know, piece of the, the puzzle. Mm, that's so beautiful, Audrey. Thank you. That's that's very inspiring and very touching um are there any um you i know you work with a lot of different people are there any people in your life i, I know i have a feeling i know what you're going to say to the answer the, to this though but like <laughs> your your teachers who who are teachers and people who inspire you <laughs> i know what you're gonna say <laughs> oh, <really good. laughs> are there like are there teachers or people that inspire me yeah particular yeah. ones that uh, I don't know what I'm going to say. 
<laughs> so I thought, I thought because um, I, I just, your whole energy, it's like I can see that you see in everyone these things that you're learning all the time. So I, I, I don't, I'm sorry to be presumptuous. I didn't, I hope that didn't come across as like, you know, um, you know, I, I just, I just could see that, um, you, you just, you're constantly lo learning and constantly practicing and growing and giving, and it's this cycle. So when I asked that question, I thought that I, I did, I <laughs> thought you, I could just see that you just learn from everybody. Like it was obvious to me yeah. that like everyone's like your teacher. I mean, it's, it's true. I think <laughs> I, I remember this one time I was on a bus, um, and I was just, you know, sitting on the bus reading a book and, um, and then I heard the bus driver just start to talk really loudly and like really kindly to this one woman that was getting on. He was just saying, oh, like, great to see you today. You know, there's a seat right here. You can take this seat and, you know, let us know if you need anything. And so I was like, why is this guy being so nice? So I turned around and, um, and the, it was a blind woman who had come on the bus. And so I was like, oh, that makes sense, you know, and because he was talking extra loudly and all this stuff. And so... Um, and then he asked her, what stop are you getting off at? And, um, just to make sure he knew to check in with her when she got off. Um, and so I was watching throughout the bus ride, you know, and, and throughout the whole bus ride, he would like greet people as if he already, you know, he would greet regular people. There was one person that came on, he was like, I haven't seen you in a while. Or like, you're at a different stop today or, you know, and it's just like super familiar, super friendly guy. And it was just making, I just totally put my book down. I just totally, I was watching him and, and, um, and noticing, you know, all the little things. I've never met a bus driver that was that friendly. Usually they're, you know, running late or really, you know, cranky or whatever. It's a tough job too, right? Like, so, um, so then when we got to the stop where the blind woman was getting off, you know, he was just like, you know, oh, this is your stop, and it was great to have you today, and then he looked at the, the person behind her that was getting off and said, can you just make sure she gets to the subway station, and okay, and, and then the blind woman's like, I don't need no, like, extra like, help, you know, <laughs> she's just like, I don't need that, like, I'm fine, <laughs> and, and then he's like, okay, okay, <laughs> and so they get off, and then usually there's two doors, there's the front door of the bus and the, the back door of the bus, and usually people get off on the back door. Um, but, and he had forgotten to open the back door because he was so focused on this woman. So everyone, there's this big crowd by the back door of the bus and everyone's like, can you open the back door, please? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was distracted. And so he like opens the back door and lets them all out. And I'm sitting there just watching this. I was like, wow, like what an amazing bus driver, you know, like who really cares about all these yeah. people. And I was like, I have to tell him thank you. Like, I have to, when I get off, I have to tell him how much I enjoyed riding on his bus. And, you know, of course, when I had that thought, I was like, oh, you can't get off in the front of the bus. Or, like, you you know, like, all these, like, silly excuses start to flood my head of, like, oh, no, don't do that. That's silly. And then I was like, no, like, that's just your mind talking. Like, you really have to do this. So when it got to my stop, I just went up. And I said, you know, I really appreciated, like, the way you helped the blind woman and just, like, your your real friendliness on the bus. I really, really, like, enjoyed writing um, today. And and he just, like, broke into the biggest smile. And he just said, oh, thank you so much. You know, and he was just like, um, you know. And, and then he told me, he's like, my brother is deaf. And so, you know, when there's someone with special needs, I usually try to just support them a little more. And thank you so much for telling me, you know, that really makes me, like, feel good that someone noticed and that someone cares. Um, so, yeah, and so I got off on the bus, like, on cloud nine, you know. <laughs> really, it's like a selfish thing doing these things, right? Because I'm like, I feel like I'm like the main beneficiary. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it's that, you know realizing that we don't need to put so many barriers up between ourselves and other people and that really we're all in the same boat um yeah that's awesome that's a great story that's uh really beautiful and it's nice to know you know there are happy bus drivers i'm sure people you know that's their job some people that was their calling and how many people's lives he touches by the energy that he brings to his work and what he does that's amazing hey um making me cry <laughs> that's a good thing um are there um any um any books that you particularly like about um maybe kindness or 
um, any teachers that you've had in kindness that you were talking about, Gandhi and Martin Luther King, are there any particular resources that people might be able to get out of the library when they're doing their act of kindness at the library? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anything I... that, you, that you particularly comes to mind. I know you're a reader, so that's probably like looking into the abyss of how many books you've read in your life. <laughs> well, these days, I don't know. I'm not as good at reading. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's some beautiful, it really depends on kind of what you're looking for. So some books that I've really appreciated, I mean, I'm a big fan of Gandhi and um, Gandhi's spiritual successor, uh, or people, Vinoba Bhave, who people consider his spiritual successor, he actually, um, you know, spent several years walking across the country of India um, and basically going to wealthy landlords and having them give, you know, a percentage of their land to the landless. And he did it with such a pure intention that no one said no. You know, he would walk from place to place and everyone, you know, it was, it was called the Budan movement, the land gift movement. And it was the largest transfer of, his, of land in history. Um, and, um, and he just kind of had this real, this real presence about him. So um, I've been reading his, um, his memoir called uh, Moved by Love, um, which is basically like his story of his experience, you know, throughout his life. And and it's really sweet, I mean, because he's, like, on a whole nother level. But there's one story where he talks about, um, you know, so he would get, um, he would do certain things um, during the time when the British ruled India um, and, you know, out of a political protest in a way, but a very peaceful one, and he would get put in jail. And so there's one period of time where he was in jail, and there was a jail guard that just noticed he was just a super happy guy. You know, they were, he was just like... So one day the jail guard says, Vinoba, is there nothing that will make you upset? You know, is there nothing that, that will, like, make you? Because you're always, like, cheerful. You're always, and not so much cheerful, but just you're just steady. And, um, and so Vinoba said, there's actually one thing in this jail that, you know, that I would, that kind of makes me a little bit unhappy. But I'll let you guess what it is. And so he gave him, like, after a week, the guard uh, comes back and says, Vinova, I haven't been able to figure it out. You know, what is it that, like, would upset you in any way? And so Vinova says, actually, from my window, from the, my room, um, from the window, I can't see the sunrise. <laughs> and that's the one thing that, you know, that would be uh, ideal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and... Um, and so it's just, I think for me, I mean, there's so many books, uh, you know, and there's so many different, it's such a wide field. Like there's this professor at uh, Wharton School of Business in, um, at UPenn, um, Adam Grant, who wrote this book on, um, called Give and Take. And it, he basically talks about, you know, why, the, like in business, you know, or in, you know, in any kind of setting, why giving is actually beneficial for you. And it's like a whole you know, a slew of case studies and different things. So there's so many applications for, I think, kindness, of course. But um, but so it really kind of depends on what your interest is or what your... Those are uh, wonderful. <laughs> I'll add those to my reading stack. Oh, that, that sounds very inspiring. Thank you. Those Any ideas? I was open to any ideas to share with people. So thank you. Um... um there's, I have, I guess, one final question for you, um, and you had um, had told me about a, a retreat experience that you went to and you sat in meditation, and you, do you remember that story about the tree? Can you, would you mind sharing that with our Joy Fuel listeners? <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was actually um, uh, a retreat where uh, folks were in a circle um, and everyone was kind of doing a circle of sharing. They were just sharing. I forget what we were sharing about. Maybe it was just introductions or something. But I was sitting in the circle and um, I was facing the window. And so I was noticing a tree outside. And, um, and at that point, I had kind of taken some time off to just do some volunteer work. And I was noticing myself running up against the wall with my volunteering because I felt like, I wasn't offering enough or I wasn't doing enough or, you know, I wanted to like offer value and I felt like I was just taking, like, I didn't want to just, you know, take, take 
advantage of like the you know the space or the you know just be a volunteer that came through from you know the U.S. and and so I was sitting there and um, and I was looking at this tree and I was noticing, wow, you know the tree is just being itself. It's just doing its na- it's being its nature, right? And it what it does is just it just stands there. <laughs> and but as it stands there, you know, it's constantly giving out oxygen for us to breathe. It's constantly providing homes for insects and animals. It's providing shade. Its roots are holding the soil together. Um, it's doing so much, but it's not doing. It's not trying to do anything. It's just being itself, and it's tuning into its own nature. And as I was noticing this, I thought, "Wow, you know, I'm a you know I'm a human being. I'm a part mm-hmm. of nature too." And in being a part of nature, um, you know, maybe our natures are to serve each other, right? Like when a tree is really, you know, in its full form, it's serving its ecosystem. It's serving the ecosystem around it. When plants, when animals, you know, there's a whole interconnected web of life flowing in these ecosystems. And so when we're really, you know, in tune with our nature, in a way, we're just serving each other. You know, we're not, our, our natures are to be of service. And I thought, wow. Um, maybe all I need to do is to just drop into my nature. And by dropping into my nature, I'm naturally, you know, going to be of service um, because I'm naturally going to want to support my ecosystem. I'm going to want to support the people around me. And so maybe I don't have to try so hard to look for, you know, something to do, but maybe, you know, just by being myself and tuning into, you know, what that inner stillness within me, um, it will naturally emerge. And um, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be a fancy thing. It's just, it'll be what it is. Um, And so, yeah, for me, it was this moment of realizing, wow, you know, I can, you know, the, I guess the doing that comes in being. um, So So beautiful. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You are the most beautiful tree (laughs) and you give so much uh, joy and kindness and you're such an inspiration. Um, thank you so much for talking with me and um, having this opportunity. I wanted to tell you, it's funny that you mentioned the library thing because I planned a tiny little act of kindness that my son and I are going to do in honor of your time today. We have these little smile stickers that we're going to go and we're going to leave them in library books. And actually, maybe we'll leave them in the the, uh, studying, um, you know, like the SAT books. But we've got 11 because I love odd numbers because I think odd things are wonderful. (laughs) And um, we're going to leave these for people to find. And on the back, it just says for you. Because sometimes when you get an act of kindness, you're like, who's this for? Like, what is this for me? For you and just says smile. So we're going to leave those for people in, in, in gratitude for you. And I know it's really small, but it's something that we can do. And the ripple effects of, of, what you do, what each one of us has the the capacity and the possibility in us to do, are just immeasurable. It's um, it's it, it's so important though that we step forward and that we take that opportunity and we take we we jump into that possibility of ourselves because what comes back to us is immeasurable and it's joyous. You know, it, it, it creating that. I, I love what you were saying about. Um, generosity and how um, uh, that quote that you said, um, I can't remember who you said, said it about oh, um, the Dalai Lama saying okay. that, you know, kindness is, what did you say? The, the, be selfish, be generous. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But thank you so much. Thank you well, for your time and, and thank you. And um, I look forward to staying in touch too. Yeah. And um, I miss you, w- wish you many, many blessings. Thank you. And thank you so much for just holding the space to just engage with, you know, ideas like kindness and experiment with it in our own lives. I think it's beautiful to and inspiring to know that, you know, there's such a strong um, intention for this in the world, you know, and um, and so thank you for holding space oh, to help make it come alive. It feels so palpable right now. I don't know if you feel it like. I don't know if it's because the older we get, the more we recognize it, or is it the world's need for it and humanity's hunger for it that it's like now's the time, like more and more and more people, you hear the word kindness and people...
have a depth of understanding, whereas just a few years ago, it's still, it's, it's, it kindness is the movement that always has been, I think, like we've, kindness is from, since humanity, you know, this kindness in a mother's love to her child and the way the child grows because of the way the mother cares for her baby without getting anything back in the beginning. It's yeah. like this movement that is, is just growing. And it, to me, it feels like kindness is the thing that the action that we can take to heal and to, um, to reduce suffering in the world and to help us just become greater human beings. Right. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> hey, well, I have to throw bubbles again for you, right? At, at your little. <laughs> if I can get them, there we go. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> My bubbles are. There we go. <laughs> then we closing ceremony with the bubbles. <laughs> Thank you again, Orgy. And we'll be in touch. You take care. Thank you. Bye. You have been listening to the Joy Fuel Kindcast, a video and audio interview series featuring extraordinary everyday people sharing around the topics of kindness, creativity, and joy. If you enjoyed today's episode, you're invited to visit our website at www.joyfuel.org where you'll find other resources of doing things to activate greater joy and joy guardianship in your life. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.